All right guys, in this video, we are gonna talk about how to repair a bent needle. I don't have one right now, so I wanna show you. So usually what happens is usually if you bend a needle, and it's usually not major, but you're usually if you're trying to get in here and do these fine lines like this, you're trying to get real close, you will accidentally hit the board like that. That was not hard enough to put much of a bend in my needle, so because I love you guys, I wanna put a nice big dent in my needle. Yeah, I seriously love y'all. That is my Wada Eclipse. Um, you know, so the air at the needle replacements for those, I don't know, are like 15 bucks. I haven't bought one in a really long time. But, um, you know, another cat catastrophic failure occurs when you drop an airbrush. So I'm going to take my Micron and then I'm going to set it down over here gently because I like y'all, but not that much. All right. So it's going to be hard to see what I'm doing here. Really hard to get a focus on this needle. I'm probably going to lose it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of needle nose pliers. And I'm going to, before I try to remove this needle, I'm just going to go over here with a smooth needle nose pliers, just kind of pinch it, rotate, pinch, rotate, and look at it until I get the major hook out before I even try to remove it. Because if I have not damaged the nozzle yet, I don't want to. If you damage the nozzle, there's really no way to repair the nozzle. You're going to have to buy a new nozzle. There are things that could be done, but the average person, I don't think, has the capability to do them. But we want to get it smooth enough that we can get it out of there without damaging the nozzle, if that's at all possible. So, we'll work that until we get it straight enough to be able We'll pull on it just a little bit, but you don't want to break it off. You're just trying to smooth it back. Y'all think your jaw dropped when I did that to the airbrush? Remember when I was talking about how my wife does my books? Some of you remember that and how she thought I was spending a little bit too much money on equipment and stuff lately, and I promptly bought a new airbrush the next day? Well, she really, her jaw really dropped when I hit that that panel all right now that i've got it smooth enough that i feel comfortable i won't destroy my nozzle removing it i'm going to take my nozzle out by hand gently yeah it's still got a pretty good bend in it and then i'm going to take my needle out through the front of the brush because actually that's the best way to do it anyway all right so now that I've gone that far, I'm going to take the back side of my airbrush handle and I'm going to lay this on here and let it run its natural curve. So I'm not going to put any tension, pull on that to keep from bending that needle. And I will just take and roll the back side of my tight handle. Now, normally I would do this um, on a really hard surface. I have a glass table under here. The reason I have this white paper on that is so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So make sure it's laying in its natural curve at this point. And that's going to take care of about 90% of getting it back. At this point, you should be able to, it's probably got a curve in it that you probably can't even pick up right now. It's really close to back in position already. So what I'll usually do is take a water glass, and as I mentioned before, usually on a really, really hard surface right here, and then I will pick it up, and I will just let it pinch underneath the needle. Notice how the needle, I'm just letting it rest. I'm not going to apply any pressure up or down because that could bend the needle. Mm -hmm. Now that I've got the needle pinched in there without any tension, I'm going to rotate and I'm gonna pull back and then I'm gonna lift it up. I'm gonna do that two or three times. So normally, usually you just have this little hook and you can tell you have this little hook. When you're cleaning your needle, just drag your thumbnail across it 
like this, pinch it, and you'll be able to know if you've got any hooking at all in the edge of that needle. It'll show up really, really quickly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to polish that needle back out, which is a really simple process, and we'll be back in business. Okay, so I've got a couple of options for, for buffing it out. Um, one, I have a 3,000 grit Trizac pad here. So I'm going to take some buffing compound. This is a CSI Ceram X Polish. No, they do not sponsor me. Best polish for paint I have ever used in my lifetime. And anyway, so I put a little of that on a Trizac 3000 pad and I will rotate it, holding the needle. This pad has a little cushion to it. So when I hold it with my finger like this, I'm not gonna bend that needle because we got some cushion going and I'm just gonna twist rotate and pull backwards towards me always backwards if you do not have any compound you can use toothpaste in a pinch but make sure you get it really 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 clean also often before i even go to that stage i'll take my mono sand eraser which you can tell it's kind of dirty um, a lot of times i will take my mono sand eraser and I'll do the same thing. I will hold it, pressing down, making sure I do not bend up or down on the needle, and pull it backwards. All that, putting it in a drill that I've seen and modifying it to fit in a Dremel tool is absolutely, completely, and totally unnecessary. I have never found a use for this. This literally takes a couple of minutes. It's taking me longer to do it for you guys because I'm going to do it two or three times. Also, if you do not have a Trizac pad, you don't have something like a mono sand eraser, you don't have a Trizac pad, um, an old leather belt will polish the one up pretty darn nice and it's got a little bit of a give to it. But again, like I said, you know, I never put any pressure on that other than just holding it with my finger. And when it comes out of that, that needle is polished. I mean, to a perfect polish. All right, guys. So, same airbrush, same needle that I just fixed. All right, guys. So, that's pretty much it. Um, did not damage the nozzle on that particular one, so, you know, that's a good thing. Really glad I didn't damage the nozzle because I won't make as much money off that video as what that nozzle is going to cost me to replace. So, we fixed the airbrush for almost nothing. Um, you can also check out a sharpener air if you really just totally don't feel comfortable, you know, repairing a needle yourself. Um, I don't have that website, and I'm not, a, I'm not sponsored or anything like that by them. Maybe one day they'll send me one. I've never used one. Heard a lot of great things about it. That's all I really know. I've been fixing them for a long time. As a matter of fact, um, I haven't bought an Iwata Eclipse nozzle needle in a long time. And some of my airbrushes, I've never replaced a needle in. Um, so yeah, once again, if you guys like what you're seeing, remember, hit the subscribe button. Throw me some thumbs up, will you? I know there are guys, lots of people watch my videos who do not give me any interaction. And you can really help me out by leaving a comment down below the more comments we get, the more people see the video, which means the more the channel is going to grow. So I could use your help. I'm giving you some help. Give me some help if you would. I appreciate you guys. Y'all have a good one.